Hello everyone, it's me Eggnog, your everyday LEGO Star Wars enthusiast, and today we're going to be reviewing a ship that needs no introduction. It's the ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 parsecs, that's right, it's the Millennium Falcon. To be more specific, we're looking at set 75257, the Millennium Falcon, coming with uh, 1351 pieces, uh, 7 minifigures, and costing $160 USD. And here's the set. This set's pretty simple. It comes with your main build, the Millennium Falcon, and also a couple minifigures. Let's take a look at those. The first figure in this set is Lando Calrissian from his episode nine appearance. As you can see, he's got a very nice a very nice yellow shirt here that I'm quite fond of. Just some simple printing, a little holster and a belt. Nothing on the legs printing, just straight black legs, which is a little disappointing. But again, I don't think it takes away too much from this figure. A uh, pretty good hair piece, a bit of a receding hairline, and a nice face print with that classic mustache. I think the best part about this figure has got to be this cape. Blue on the inside with the collar, that nice blue color. Flip it around, it's black. I always loved two-tone capes, and I think this figure is a great example of that. Lifting up the cape uh, just shows a very simple print on the back, but it is there, so that's a nice inclusion. And he comes with a staff and a very interesting blaster that kind of looks like a bow caster with like a weird silver gun piece. I'm not complaining, but I don't really know what it's supposed to represent in the film, but overall a very nice figure. The next figure on the list is Chewbacca. Really not much to say here, your classic Chewbacca figure. Flip him around for you guys. Just got the bandolier. Uh, it's a good figure, but I really got nothing to say, you know? Uh, again, another figure that there's really nothing to say about is C-3PO. He's a good C-3PO. Definitely not the best we've seen, especially, I mean, compared to something like the 3PO from the UCS Land Speeder. But then again, he's still not a terrible figure, but nothing really to say here. There's the back. Next, we got Episode 9 Finn. Very nice figure, some leg printing over there, kind of represent his holster, some belt, uh, some waist printing to that belt. Very nice torso print. I like the look of the vest with the arms. He's got a little, uh, oh, I don't know. Just a little, little, I don't, a little pack, a little sack he's got, and he can carry some thermal detonators or anything in. Good hair piece. His first face is just a nice smile. And then on the back, we got a much more frightened face. And again, he's got a, a gunmetal gray blaster, different from Lando's. Very good figure. I know he's in a couple sets, but nothing wrong with getting Finn. And if he definitely belongs in this set, so I'm not complaining. Next on the list is everybody's favorite character, Bulio. He looks great. Pretty simple. He's got some printing on his torso, his waist, and his pants, and a drop. There you can see a pretty detailed print on the back. Very nice figure. Obviously the best draw is that uh, head mold. It's kind of rubbery, so it's not gonna break or anything, but very detailed, very unique, great figure. And hey, if you wanna make him a little more movie accurate, it's really not that hard to do. Next is R2-D2, and like with C-3PO and Chewbacca, I don't want to beat a dead horse and waste your time. We all know what Lego uh, R2-D2 looks like. I think I said C-3PO before. Oh, well. But we all know what R2-D2 looks like, so I'm not even going to bother. And the final figure in this set is Dio. Cute little guy. Just one piece. Just fits on a stud. Um, I think they do a good job. With his size, I think he looks great. The printing is very detailed for being such a small little guy. And I mean, just a fun character to get in this set, for sure. So here are all the figures, and it kind of brings up an interesting question of, 
you know, because this is an episode nine set, there's no Han Solo, Princess Leia, Luke, Obi-Wan. The Lego characters you get are all good individually, but when they come together, they don't really make a good crew for your Millennium Falcon. Obviously, Lando and Chewie are good picks, but everyone else feels a little out of place for this set. This is the first Millennium Falcon without a Han Solo minifigure. I just think it's kind of a it's kind of interesting, you know, end of an era type deal, but I mean, not my favorite selection for a Millennium Falcon, but it's fine. Now, if the characters aren't the best, this ship certainly makes up for it. Don't mind me adjusting the camera. It is probably the best. In fact, I'd bet most would be willing to say this is the best Millennium Falcon build to date. So let's get down a little lower and, and look at it closer. I guess we'll start up here with the mandibles of the Falcon, as you can see down here. And they don't have a ton of detail, but they have a nice, so as you can see here, there's some pretty nice greebling along the two edges to give it that sort of Millennium Falcon look. And we got a fun little play feature where if you look in here, if the lighting would stop being weird, there are flick fire missiles. So you have to forgive me for some of the camera work here. This is the first time I've done a really big set. If you press down in here, you can shoot off the flick fire missiles, which is very fun. Moving over to the uh, side of the Falcon, as you can see here, some very nice detailing along the edges. Looks very nice. And coming on top, you can see we got the nice circular antenna. Some sticker pieces here, which are fine. I'm not the biggest sticker fan, but whatever. Not a ton of greebling on top, just some different color matches, stuff like this. Not the most impressive, but at the end of the day, it still looks very good. Flipping it around to the uh, the rear end of the ship is very nice. Of course, the exhaust ports look great. Little bit of greebling here. And the engines just look incredible. That trans blue on that white is just the perfect combination. And some tube pieces to round it off never look bad. On the nearing the cockpit, of course, we still have some greebling along this end. A little sticker piece here. And my main complaint up here on the uh, near the cockpit leading into it, you have four stickers here that if you don't put them on perfectly, you can see mine don't line up too good. And it's good detail, but especially when you have to line up a bunch of stickers in a row, I just don't really appreciate that. The cockpit is very easy to take off. Comes off real nice and easy. Just a little control panel and a lever in there to activate the hyperdrive. And uh, three seats. I mean, there's only really two, but technically you can fit Dio in right there. A character can sit right there and a character can sit right in there. So you can technically have three characters in the cockpit. And it's a little tricky, but you just put it back on. Let's get into the interior. So as you can see, one thing that makes this Millennium Falcon great, oh, camera. One of the things that makes this Millennium Falcon so great is the, the very little gaps all along it. The only big gaps are like right here, in there, around here, back here, wobbling the camera. Jeez, this is a rough episode. But accessing the interior is very simple. Just pull this up, three sections in the back. This comes up and forward, this lifts up, and this lifts up. And then you have full access to your interior. 
So in the front section of the Millennium Falcon, you have a very nice chair build here, swivels around with some control panels back there, just to sit a figure you want in. In the meantime, we'll sit Bulio in to command the Falcon. We have the seats over here, along with the hollow table, which is a classic, you can't forget that. Although, these, this part here swivels a little bit, this chair, if you can see that. It's just built on a rotating piece, so it kind of swivels. And these are all stickers up here, which is kind of annoying. And then on the other side, just right here, we have a bucket that you can put some stuff into. The back side of the Falcon is pretty barren. You have some beds where you can have your characters lie down and maybe, whoa! You have a kitchen over here with like a frying pan and a little red cup where they can sit down. Another barrel, I believe there's a thermal detonator in here. You do have another classic part of every Millennium Falcon. You can lift up here. You got a little smuggling compartment where you can hide your spice or yourself. Looks like, uh, looks like Emperor Palpatine snuck into mine. I don't know how he got there. But that just closes right back up and you can fit your characters in there. Over here behind Lando, you can see you have the boarding dock that can close down. I'll move him out of the way. Closes down. Unfortunately, it's too small for characters to walk down or up, but it looks pretty good. You can see it coming down from there if it'll focus. At the end of the day, the insides are very barren and that could be a big disappointment for some people missing a lot of play features but but when you start closing it up it just looks very nice very displayable and i think that's in my opinion what makes this the best one is that it just looks good from the outsides a lot of other millennium falcons just had too many gaps in my opinion so there's the Millennium Falcon for you with mediocre figures, a mediocre interior, but a very good exterior. I think it does. I think at the end of the day, it's one of the best Millennium Falcons. Although again, those figures and that lack of play features might be a bit of a deterrent towards you. But if you don't have a Millennium Falcon and you're looking to get one, you can't go wrong with this. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. It means the world to me. And I'm Eggnog, and I hope to see you in the next video.